Welcome back to the Muzzle Blast Podcast, the official podcast of the National Muzzle Loading Rifle Association. This show is made possible by the members of the NMRA. Thank you. Today we're sitting down with popular black powder and muzzle loading YouTuber Mark Humphreys of the Black Powder Maniac Shooter YouTube channel. Mark has been a serious advocate of the NMLRA ever since he started making YouTube videos just a couple years ago. It's been great to talk with our members back and forth online. So many of them have mentioned Mark's channel and Mark's videos being the reason that they've gotten back into muzzleloading or just into muzzleloading in general. He brings a safe but also a little bit goofy take to YouTube when it comes to muzzleloading. So we're excited to have him on the show this week. If you haven't seen Mark's videos, be sure to check out down in the show notes when the podcast is over. We'll have some links there to some of our favorite videos from him, as well as some of the videos that he talks about in the conversation. So thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Uh, I'm Mark Humphreys uh, from uh, Maysville, Kentucky, over in Kentucky, probably two hours away from, from Friendship, Indiana. And we just finished up today, just to give some background to the listeners, We've been outside since about eight, seven or eight this morning, setting up for your New Year's Day shoot here at the right. NLRA. So we're kind of <laughs> a little chilly, kind of finally inside into the warmth and <laughs> relaxing some. <laughs> yeah. I put that together last year because I, 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 I just thought there would be a fun day for, for fellas to come and shoot because there was no, no entry fee and no prize money, no medals, just come Let's talk shop, swap each other's guns, and test fire a few of them. And, and I just thought it would be a laid-back day. And, and trying that last year for the first time, I thought maybe five or six shooters would show up. I posted it on the NMLRA Facebook page and put a little short promo video together. And 21 shooters showed up. It was about 38 degrees and a little little hazy. But uh, 21 shooters showed up, and we, we shot – Muzzle loaders all day long from nine till four o'clock, and and uh, they asked if I would be willing to do it again this year, and I said, if y'all come, I'll come. So that's how I got started. And today we had thirty six shooters, thirty six, that's great, show up for for this event, and we had plenty to eat because I asked them to uh, to uh, bring snacks and so forth, and uh, and my bride made uh, chili to take care, of, and we brought a bunch of hot dogs over and gold star chili sauce and. We cooked all these things, and they uh, they seemed to enjoy it. So wasn't anything left of the chili. Which, yeah, <laughs> which was pretty surprising there. So uh, I think the cold weather kind of helped with that. It did. And the fellas are asking to do it again next year. So pretty much weather permitting, and that's always a you know we really lucked out. <laughs> yes, yes. You never know when you plan these things three weeks, four weeks in advance if it's seventy degrees or seven inches snow on the ground. So. That's uh, and we got lucky today. It was sunny and about forty-five or so. Yeah. A lot of jackets, yeah, <laughs> a lot of thin sweaters, and even the girls showed up had thinner jackets on, which surprised me. So yeah. it worked out real well. We wanted to bring you on because you've been prominently, a, you've been a prominent figure online for muzzleloading for a while mm -hmm. now. With your, you run the Black Powder Maniac Shooter YouTube channel. Correct. And if many of our listeners and members really enjoy that your YouTube channel, but if you haven't, if you're listening, you haven't seen Mark's channel, definitely check it out. He's been putting out some great how-to videos and safety videos on muzzleloading mm -hmm. that we picked up on and just wanted to bring you in and, and talk about talk with you some. And putting on this shoot here at our range, you know, we're really thankful for everything you've done for the community and it's nice to sit down and talk with you well thank you and bring you I enjoyed. in i enjoy muzzle loading the, the the wife of mine thinks i've absolutely gone berserk um with the hobby and yeah. um i think a lot of wives do if they're not, <laughs> if they're not shooters too yeah they yeah she just shakes her head and, and she watches some of the videos before i post them online and she just she shakes her head are you actually going to post this video I said, yes ma'am Sunday night, it's going to go on the on the internet, so uh, so the viewers can see it. So, so how did you get started in muzzleloading then? Uh, believe it or not, I had a, a, the wife of mine's brother called me out of the blue in the summer of 2013 and says, I've got this old cap and ball gun, he called it, and I want to give it to you. I want you to have this because I'm not going to take it out anymore. Come on out here and get it. So I went out there, picked it up, and it's a Traditions Hawkins Woodsman 50 caliber uh, percussion gun and uh, I still have it today I shot this a few days ago the um, 
uh, he gave me a, a can of power decks and a few round balls and sent me on my way. And, oh, jeez, you know, pyrodex. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the so, hair on the back of my neck kind of stood exactly. up Exactly. <laughs> I didn't know power decks from anything else at the time. I was pretty pretty green with, with the sport. And uh, uh, I spent 30 years in the metal detecting hobby, uh, searching uh, battlefield sites and so forth and, and Civil War areas and stuff like that. So he gave me this gun, and, and I trialed and aired with it. And I had balls stuck in it and dry balled it a few times and I stuck drill bits in it on ramrods to get drill balls stuck out and uh -huh. stuck out of it. Finally figured out you could pour powder in behind the nipple and, and fire it out. And the first time I tried that, Ethan, I actually hung the gun in a tree in the backyard because I was scared of it uh -huh. and have hit the point straight to the ground and tied the string to the trigger and run it up over a branch and stood about 75 feet away and pulled the string. Oh my gosh. And because the dry ball worked, it just yeah. shot the ball right into the ground. Yeah. And I took one of the metal detectors to, to go find the ball to be sure I actually did get it out. Yeah. And I uh, got it out. And and uh, that's basically how I got started in the muzzle loading. And uh, probably six months later, at the end of 2013, I was in Louisville one day, Louisville, Kentucky. I told the wife, I'm going to stop in the Cabela store and see if they got a flintlock rifle in there. I'll get one of those. Of course, being the end of the year sales, the time to go get these things. Yeah. And they had a Pedersoli, Kentucky flintlock rifle winner a little small lock gun mm -hmm. 50 caliber and it was the last one on the shelf and i told the, the salesman look you know everybody has spit on this gun they've dropped it you got to give me some kind of a break and uh they sold it to me for 500 bucks i couldn't believe it wow and the guy even pulled a box out of the back and the instruction book and wrapped put it in the original plastic i paid for the gun and walked out the door thinking now nah, if i don't like this hobby i'll at least sell it and i get beat up on it too bad but Got to shooting that thing. By then, it figured out how to not drive all guns, and got to playing with it and shooting uh, and my wife's old skillets and things like that, and, <laughs> and, and got wrapped up into the hobby really fast and loved it. Still do. That's awesome. Still That's do. quite the story of, of getting into it. Yes, it's a uh, it's it's a fun hobby, and and through the, the trial and errors that that I've done with it. Uh, I've had several others in my hometown that that interested in the, mm -hmm. in the hobby, and so kind of working with them a little bit, showing them what not to do, what yeah. I've done, how not to drive all guns, and powder patch and ball method is yeah. always the best <laughs> way. You know, there's a certain order that needs to be, yeah, needs to and, be followed. And, uh, yeah, and I haven't done that sometimes, so yeah. I've been showing a couple of the fellows in my hometown, and uh, and brought one of them with me today, and he he shot uh, a gun that he picked up a few weeks ago, and he 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 burned powder up there all afternoon at the New Year's Day shoot, so uh, That's awesome. it, was, it, was a, it was a good day. That's what we like to hear, is getting people involved. And I think talking with people on the range, that muzzleloaders seem really intimidating. But as, if you know somebody or you can watch a video mm -hmm. of somebody that knows what they're doing, that intimidation barrier is just kind of dropped very quickly. And that's one of the reasons why I, I tried to put these videos together several years ago. I actually wish I'd use my better cameras now, but I have crude... <laughs> videos on the on the on there but they're they're effective and i was using cheaper kodak cameras and filming things but i wanted to show a new visitor or new viewer how actually to load muzzle loaders and to actually know what accoutrements you need in your shooting pouches and stuff like that to to get them started without going through all the dry balling i did and, yeah and having drill bits stuck in barrels and shooting them out and all kinds of silly stuff that I did originally hanging them in trees and yeah. pulling tri triggers with strings and afraid that the barrels would blow out on me. So I wanted to keep them from getting to deal with that. So uh, yeah. that's one of the reasons why I like to put the how-to videos together. Yeah. So how did you hear about the NMLRA then? And you got started and you got your you got your petter solely. What was kind of the next step to coming here? The next step is, believe it or not, I, I have a fellow on the mail route that, that I that one of the customers on the mail route that I carried up in my hometown named Bill Pritchard. He's a gun builder, and he uh, I found out he was a gun builder and stopped and talked to him one day on the routes, and he mentioned the the Muzzle Loading Association. He, he said, it's in Friendship, Indiana. It's like most folks, where is Friendship, Indiana? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where this is. Well, it's an hour, it's an hour uh, it's out, in the Indiana border, just out of Lawrenceburg. I was okay, so... He said, you need to come in June, second week of June. So I, I, I took a day off from work and came over here and never even took the guns out of the truck, just walked around. I was overwhelmed with all the vendors 
and all the muzzleloaders being fired everywhere. And, and I spent the whole day walking around from one end of this property to the other, just checking out all the fellow shooting and the girl shooting and pistols and, and the smooth bores and, and up in primitive. And I thought, man, this is right down my, this is right down my alley. We got to come over and do some more of this. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, picked up a magazine and joined that, that, that weekend, whatever day that was. Yeah. And, um, and been with them ever since. So, and then, so you've got your muzzleloader, you've joined, and then when did the videos start? Because that's how that's what most people know you for. Right, right. Believe it or not, when my daughter was a freshman in high school, seven or eight years ago, she came home from school one day and said, "Daddy, we help me make a public service announcement." And I looked at her like, "What are you talking about?" As well, I signed up for this video editing class. And the teacher required us to make a public service announcement. So I said, okay, we'll do one. So we put one together on, on sexting. Don't do any sexting. <laughs> and since she was a little blonde girl, it worked out great. So we did several scenes around, around town and put together one where at the end of the video, she actually sexted so much that she commits suicide by getting run over by a train. Oh, my God. <laughs> on the, she didn't get run over by a train because I still have her today. But right. we portrayed that on the video. And I, and I told myself... Man, this is this is cool stuff. I like this. So, I started uh, using little cheap video cameras myself and doing Ohio River skiing videos with the kids swinging off ropes in the river and and falling off the inner tubes and things like that. And and I've actually left a couple of those videos on the Black Pedometic Shooter channel on on the bottom of the main screen, so I can go back and look at them once in a while, see what the kids look like in high school. Yeah. And uh, and about and, when was that then? Uh, 23rd, 2014, 2015. Okay. And then 2016, I said, hey, if she can do these, I can do them for muzzle loading. So I started putting simple, pretty crude videos together of shooting uh, skillets and um, bowling pins and, and water jugs and just whatever I could find. One camera set up, seven behind the targets, and sometimes shooting at it, and just basically crude stuff for two minutes so and then i thought you can do better than this let's put some fun into this because a lot of the videos that you watch on, on the youtube channel they're the fellows are all too serious yeah you know what i try to do is make it fun i want you to laugh at me and say he's nuts you know but try to shoot all these videos in a safe manner because i don't want anyone to you gotta attack be me for being yeah for for i don't know sticking your mouth over the end of a muzzle loader or something right. or something silly like that yeah so uh, i review them nine ten twelve times before they actually get posted looking for any type of safety violations and if that is found not to do a whole lot of that but if i do find an infraction then i delete that part out of there yeah. and, and change it to something else and and several times i've actually filmed videos and and caught uh, lean a gun against a tree and I walk past it looks like it's unsafe so I'll go back down to the location shoot and shoot that section over again okay. put the same clothes back on right. that I had whatever I had on that day same jackets and same boots shoes whatever and go back down and refilm that little 30 second clip to change it around so it's actually safe so I don't want anyone to to attack me for being unsafe videos right and that's so, something that I think it's really common online. I mean, even on the association side, I'll post something and people will find safety violations in. And, mm -hmm. you know, like sometimes they're there and that's, you know, you got to, I got to be called out on it. But sometimes it's like. I, I, I do too. I, I got called out of one a couple summers ago. I we were shooting pistols with a, with a fellow. And even though the gun was unloaded and the both of us knew that, yeah. I had it accidentally pointed toward his face. And someone, someone burned me on that, yeah. and and rightfully so. Yeah, you know, and I already had it uploaded on the internet, and the fellow was gone, so I couldn't reshoot the scene. And, right, you know, and, and all I could do is reply. You know, the guns were unloaded, but yeah, you know, and, and several videos that I have coming up soon, I'm I'm tinkering with pistols and so forth, and at the end of the videos, I'll, I'll pause it for ten seconds, but pistol is unloaded okay. as a text, yeah, as a text on it, so that I won't get beat up for right something potentially unsafe i don't want that right so and i think that's in a way it's your responsibility to portray it safely exactly and, and do it safely exactly don't want anyone to get hurt because yeah. i try to keep the channel family friendly 
so that uh, I don't allow any vulgar language on it. I don't allow any attacks. Uh, I don't know, screaming, biting, silly stuff that you see on a lot of videos anymore. Yeah. If it bleeds, it leads type stuff. I don't, I don't want that on there. No. I keep it family friendly, so your kids could even watch it if they want to, right. and enjoy the, whatever they're watching. Whereas I'm shooting Mizzou critter targets, as I call them, which are metal targets made in the shape of hogs and and uh, ducks and so forth. So uh, I just keep it fun. That's what it's about. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of people have told me about your channel. And when we started sharing your event today and the shoot, mm -hmm. and even during the shoot, just how much fun it was. You know, we have our competitive side, and that's very much a part of what we do here. Yes. But it, you, it's really easy to be intimidated by that. And the fun part of it is just as important. Exactly. And I was intimidated the first year I came over and brought the guns with me. I thought, you know, these guys are all been shooting forever, and they they're exactly know what's going on. I'm kind of, you know blind leading blind here type thinking and i thought well at least i'll i'll shoot the uh the running bore event you can't really mess that up too bad and the first time i shot it i got a, a score of whopping four points <laughs> 10 shots at the running hog and i got a solid four i almost wanted to run hide in the weeds I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so now you can get that i don't know what the potential score is 100 points i guess but whatever it is i got four yeah and the second time i shot it the next year i got Goose egg. <laughs> That's just Nothing. the way it goes sometimes. I could not hit any. I hit the pig running the opposite way once, but I could not hit anything on that. So I thought, boy, if there's a if there's a bottom end score, I'll, I'll get that award. <laughs> so, but I uh, enjoy shooting the woods walks now. I, I've taken the cameras with me the last couple of years. Uh, shooting with uh, Tambi Dudley. She's a, she's a, a shoot and Swiss rep here in, in, okay. in the U.S., and uh, we get together, and we had a blast over here shooting Woods Walk. I, I rode her, ribbed her, give her a hard time. She's giving it back to me. And just <laughs> general fun ribbing, and we had a great time. Yeah. Didn't care what the scores was. We had a good time and put that on, on the channel back in the summer, and they, they seemed, seemed like they enjoyed it. So That's great. We'll be sure to put videos to your channel, or links to your channel, I'm sorry, in well, the thanks. description of the podcast and things. So if you're listening, you can reference and go check out Mark's videos well, thank you. when we're thank talking you. about them here. Uh, we talked a little bit today about how much work goes into a video because I was filming and you were filming and we got to talk shop a little bit. Yeah. But just for the listeners and people who enjoy your videos, you know, what's your process look like? Yeah, I try to keep it very simple when I'm out into in the field shooting. You know, you've all seen videos where someone uh, has their cell phone camera out shooting and and they're, they're, you see someone's maybe shooting a muzzle loader for eight, nine seconds, and then that's pretty much it. And, and the screens has got the narrow. They're shooting vertical. Vertical. Yeah, drives me and, nuts. And uh, it drives me bonkers, too. So I, uh, I shoot the cameras with where I can get the whole screen on it. I use the Canon cameras. Um, but generally, when I'm by myself, I will set them up on, I don't even use tripod. I have a piece of PVC pipe, a couple shock cords, and a, and a selfie stick. I stick them up on it and twist the camera lens around where I can actually see myself, which before I was just guessing where I was on the <laughs> other cameras. But now I can at least see myself and, and film the, the, the opening scenes or whatever that way. But I have a backup camera that I use, a B-roll camera like we were talking about earlier, that I will show hitting the targets, whatever target I'm shooting. And I'll go home and edit those, splice those two together so that actually the viewers can see a target being hit, especially if it's a good distance out. Mm -hmm. And and I fig figured out how to do that in the last few months. An amazing part, Ethan, is this, is if I can't figure out how to use something on, on the Final Cut Pro X program that I'm using, I'll YouTube it. And yeah. guess what happens? A 12-year-old girl comes <laughs> over and tells me how to do it. Yeah. I said, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. I, you picked, know? I <laughs> picked up my, when I picked up my drone, to film some things I went on YouTube and I was like I didn't know how to use it and in fact the first time I got it stuck into a tree <laughs> and that, that's a long story but I, I after that I was like okay I need to learn how to use this and like you say some 12 year old <laughs> is sitting there with like 10 million subscribers tell me how to exactly. use this drone and I'm a grown man sitting there like how do I use this thing <laughs> thank you that's exactly what I've done you're, you're not gotta alone be in that. and I will pause her video and to go over there and do what she says, and it works. Yeah. I think you got to be kidding yeah. me. You know? <laughs> I think that these kids are born with computers in their in their hands, I guess. I don't know. I, I don't know. Things. I mean, I 
I've grown up, I had dial up, so I've grown up with the internet pretty much my whole life. And there's mm-hmm. still stuff I don't, I don't get. I don't and, know if I'm getting old, if I'm going to start seeing white hairs. You're not there yet. I mean, <laughs> I still, I grew up with rotary phones. Okay. With wires thinking out of the walls and, and we do that. But as far as video making is concerned is, uh, is I uh, will shoot the scenes. Uh, my general rule of thumb is if I shoot uh, an action scene by myself, which up until this past summer, pretty much all of them were by myself, I limit them to five minutes to five, ten, five minutes and ten seconds in that area. Because my thinking is, is you won't watch a video that's 10, 12 minutes long with some fellow loading a muzzle loader for four minutes, shoot at a target, well, I need to reload it again, and this, you got to put the powder in. I mean, you know, it's all that's in slow motion. Part. Exactly. <laughs> So I try to keep the shooting action going on as much as possible, usually within 20 or 30 seconds of the last shot, I'm ready to put the next one into it, or some type of an action scene to, to keep the viewers watching. So five minutes is generally the limit to put on by myself. If I'm shooting with you, for example, since we're splitting time between you and me, maybe seven, seven and a half minutes. Okay. And... Uh, uh, I was shooting a, a video with with a fellow from Portsmouth uh, uh, last week, and his dad came out, and the three of us together were at, were at a range up in Vanceburg, Kentucky, and I was laughing at those fellows, and they were laughing at me, and it's it's just giggles and laughs all afternoon, like a three high school kids, and uh, that one's almost eight minutes long, but it is jam packed full of shooting, and I'm gonna post that on the channel here in a couple of weeks because awesome. this one today is going to come up next for okay. the New Year's Day program. So, uh, but I'll limit to seven minutes or so if two of us are shooting or, or three. But the event like today, or I come over here in the June and September shoots, the nose are generally in the eleven minute range or maybe okay. twelve if I get enough dynamite stuff, in my opinion, to keep you watching it. Right. And I don't do this for the money because there's no money. <laughs> there's no money in it. No, I, and YouTube doesn't really like gun channels anyway. Yeah. So. You know, they demonetize everything, and most of the time I demonetize them before I even list them because I just don't want to deal with the house. I do it for the fun of video work and want everybody to, to see what's going on in, in eastern Kentucky. So yeah. that's that's the reason why I do them. It's for the fun of, of, of see if I can actually still put something good together that someone would watch. So. Yeah. So how many people do you have watching? General, there, the, the, the channel has, at the moment, 3,880 or 30, just under 4,000 subscribers, which when I started it in 2016, I, I was hoping for 300. I thought, if I get 300, I'll be, I'll be blessed. And it's for whatever, I don't know how all that works, but it's up to all, just under 4,000 subscribers. Most videos have 1,000, 1,200 uh, views on them a, a week. And I try to put them on twice a month. Okay. Lately, I've been putting them on every week. But I usually get every other Sunday evening is when I try to post them and uh, let them run for two weeks. And unless it's something that just, that, you know, really dynamite, I let it sit a little longer. It just depends on which one it is. But uh, for the most part, a 1,000 views is what they get. The, the muzzleloading community, as you know, is a small yeah. market of the, uh, a small segment of the market. You know, if I were putting AR videos together, uh, you know, or or Glocks or something, it, it would have, you know, 20,000 views overnight because... There's a lot more people. In exactly. It. There's, it's a bigger, wider market. But yeah. the muzzleloading is such a small market, that's what surprised me, that the channel actually has almost 4,000 subscribers because it is a small market. There's only, in my opinion, maybe three or four good uh, uh, muzzleloading channels out there. Mike Bellevue has one. Duelist 1854, I think it's his mm-hmm. page. He is a, a good channel, um, and I can't think of the others caught me off guard, but there's several others out there that, that has them, and um, they, they do good work too, but I just wanted to change it up and make something fun where where the viewers would just laugh. And say, he's, he's silly. He's fun, but he's silly. And, you know, and I think thinking about those other channels, I like watching their videos, but you, you definitely have your own spin on it. And I think that's right. what a lot of people really enjoy. You know, you're not, you don't have your nose up in the air about it. No, you, know, you no, you're exactly. shooting j- Hawaiian punch jugs or milk jugs. You know, you're not specking out. You know, a custom muzzle loader. You know, you're using no. stuff that everybody can go out and get involved and get started exactly with and have fun. You don't need to spend, you know, five grand to go shoot a muzzle loader and right. enjoy it. 
Yeah. And I've been asked that quite a bit on on the on the channel and comments and stuff. Uh, and it's time for you to get a custom built one. And and I, I generally come back with not at this time. And the main reason why is because I wouldn't take a fifteen hundred or two thousand dollar muzzle loader that's built by Tip Curtis or somebody that's that's cool looking gun. And and I'm I'm all for that beautiful, but those are used in the range and so forth. Where I take mine to is backwoods, Eastern Kentucky. They lay in the bottom of canoes. They're, they're in the rain. I mean, I've, I've dropped the, that, that Petrosoli mine in the mud one time, and I actually had to go get uh, take the lock out and go down to a creek and wash, wash the mud out of it and go back over put in a gun to go out and shoot it with it or let her go home. So I washed the mud out of the lock and, and down in the creek, kind of like you know Simon Kenton would have done, <laughs> and put it back together and went ahead and, and Film some more, so it, it the one I have is, is seen a pretty hard life. That's so. awesome, though. I mean, so. <laughs> that kind of connects with the history of them, though. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's what the guys originally in Kentucky were doing with. Yep, them. I do pretty much what they did. It's yeah. not, it's not custom. As a matter of fact, the barrel is eight or nine inches shorter than the most custom built ones. Uh, but uh, for what I use it for, it, it's a fantastic gun. It, yeah. it, it's 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 seen a hard life. If I showed <laughs> it to you, you'd shake your head. Yeah, it's. It's it's beat up, scratched up. You know, there's no no prettiness at all, but it just keeps right on, it keeps, keeps on right ticking. on working. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. What are some of the funniest moments you've had in making video? I mean, I'm sure there's some. There's. Are, do you have like a blooper reel somewhere that you just you've never I, released? I have, or? What I do is is I save all the videos in um, one of those terabyte boxes or whatever you call mm -hmm. them, external boxes. Yeah. And. Um, when I do film videos, uh, the, some of the blooper stuff I'll put in them if it's funny, locks it won't work, and dropped in the mud and so forth. But what I generally do is I drop those video clips into a little special desktop folder itself, and I mark it bloopers 2019. And when I get 50 or 60 of them in there, then I will link them together in a video and put some kind of a crazy you know, circus music or something to it. <laughs> And uh, there actually is uh, two of them on the channel at the moment from 2017 or 2018. And it shows five or six minutes of some of the silliest stuff that, you know, uh, did a running and reloading scene on one of those. And, and the wife was, since I didn't have a drone, I was running down a hillside. It's mowed hillside, and she's in the van beside it. And I had a, a camera sticking on a selfie stick on the, on the armrest out the window. And I told her to keep up the same speed as my running. So I'll shoot the gun and run down through the through this grassy area right after a big rain, reload it, turn around, shoot it again, and start running again, and slip fell around my back. And she's up there cracking up laughing. <laughs> well, it's good she didn't and, run you over. <laughs> yes. So I said, okay, okay, Mom, let's back up there and do it again. It was about the seventh time we did that, and I'm about wore out running down there yeah. trying to trying to run running reloading scene. So... Um, but uh, I have cameras fall over in the canoes, uh, drop them in, in drop the, the guns in the mud on the bank, and it just anything that's unusual that someone would kind of snicker at or laugh at, I'll, I'll put it on the bloopers video. And, and I have a desktop full of them right now that probably in the next two months I'll put another one together and, and show some of the silly stuff that goes on. So hmm. it's, it's, it's fun stuff. That's great. And you just you retired recently. Yes, yes. So would you consider yourself a full-time YouTuber now? Pretty much. Okay. Full-time, poor YouTuber. <laughs> the biggest problem I had before, Ethan, is uh, I worked for the U.S. Post Office, uh, U.S. Postal Service, and and we were working six days a week for pretty much all of 2019 because I'm not going to get into why, but right. we're short of help and getting off to go to uh, the June shoot and the September shoot was just Sunday was the only day I could make it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go to trade shows that's in the Midwest in the spring. I never could get off on Saturdays to go to these things. And finally, I, I, I looked at the retirement papers and realized it's in my best move to when I crack 60 years old, which is back in October, to say goodbye. <laughs> so quits. I signed the paperwork and said goodbye. And I've been off for uh, eight, nine Saturdays now and, and love every minute of it. For example, i even tell you this. Uh, buddy Steve Bowen and I, he's from Lexington, got together about four Saturdays ago. It rained all day and all night. And he has a farm down there in Harrison County, Kentucky. And we uh, we pulled the trucks inside the barn 
We hung a few zoo critter targets out there in the trees, and we shot out of the barn all day. That's awesome. And we put two videos together that, that, that you'll see in the next few months on, on, the, on a homemade cap gun that he had and a, and a Kentucky versus Louisville basketball game video that, <laughs> that will be pretty fun to watch. So um, we put those together. So the point of getting at is, is now that I have all these days off every day, I've got eight or nine videos sitting on my desktop ready to post and just waiting for a week or two to put one on. I have plenty of time to shoot. Now, we're versus before, well, especially with the time change, yeah. I could never get together after work and put one together. So I struggled to get anything together this right. time of the year. So, so excited to be retired. <laughs> That's good. We're, we're excited Can't for wait. you, you know, to have Can't some wait. time off. It's I'll great. bring the cameras with me everywhere they go. They, they go with me everywhere now, especially if it's muzzle related. Yeah. I'll take them to trade shows, bring them here. Definitely bring them up here today for this New Year's Day shoot. And... Uh, don't mind at all playing with them. You mentioned, so you've been shooting the video since about 2016, you said. Correct, yeah. And you you told me a story earlier today about one of your Kodak cameras. And I want to talk a little bit about what kind of changes have, you've gone through with your videos. Oh, okay. yeah. So you've, you've changed your muzzleloader some, you know, you've gotten to the Pedersoli, you've just got a pistol. And, but on the video side of things, what's changed? What's changed is uh, it finally uh, decided to upgrade the cameras. I was using uh, a Kodak, and I still remember the model numbers, M532 camera, the size of a deck of cards. And I had three of them and selfie sticks. So what I was doing is I was setting one up on, on the PVC pipe where I was shooting, set the second one up down near the target, and was shooting hogs running through the woods or whatever it been. But the problem is, is I would shoot the cameras. I shot two of the cameras. I could never hit a deck of card size camera if I wanted to hit it. But when shooting the the uh, the the, uh, the hogs or, or the turkeys or whatever we're shooting at, I shoot the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> so I I decided to finally upgrade the last summer or summer before last to some Canon models i can't remember what they are but they have zoom on them mm -hmm. so now i set the cameras up just out of range behind a tree or something six seven feet away from me in the woods and, and zoom in to the targets maybe 50 feet away so i won't have to shoot the cameras anymore <laughs> <laughs> so, so. that's not the first time i've heard of people shooting the cameras you know don't, don't feel bad about it <laughs> well good that makes me feel better than somebody else is shooting cameras so I, has your process changed? Are you are you planning more? Are you, you know, looking at successful videos and comparing them to not successful and trying to push one way or the other? Or what I've what I've started doing the last six months after meeting a, a fellow shooter, Steve Bowen from Lexington, he invited me to come down to his farm back in the spring, and we should we shot some kind of a video with smooth bores and we were shooting water bottles and swinging in the air and and clay pigeons and and so forth. He brought a couple of older guns out and I took two of mine down and I put something together with the both of us. And I thought, this is kind of cool. Instead of doing them all by myself, I'll get someone else involved with them once in a while if they're willing to do that. So I put one together with him and then about a month or two later, I stuck another one together with him. And then uh, my buddy Rick that I grew up with in high school gets involved with a few of them. And since we've known each other since high school, it's really fun watching those because I really rag him and he gets on me and yeah. we just have a good time. And then, and then recently a couple of fellows from Portsmouth got together with me. So the point of driving at is, is now that I'm retired, I'm actually going to look for fellow shooters within a couple hundred miles of my hometown and try to arrange to get together with them if they got a place to go shoot and tell them before I come, I'm coming to, to razzle you now. Yeah. I'm, we're going to shoot and have fun, but... If you miss targets, I'm going. I'm going, you know, laugh at you, and then you can laugh at me, and we'll. I'll put some fun with them in it for the ones that want to do it. Uh, focus on the shooting now, and I really yeah. try to intimidate them, funny wise. And, and uh, so now he's. Can he shoot that water bottle? Is, is he going to really choke? You know, do you have your eyes open? You know, breathe easy. Yeah. Just anything I could dream up at the time to intimidate him. And then if they miss a target. I'll laugh at him. So, well, you choked, you know, you, you know, you had one eye closed, and you're thinking of your girlfriends or whatever I can come up with that that, and it gets a get a kick out of that and so forth. So that's that's uh, we got one. I've got one a couple weeks coming up with some fellows came up Portsmouth, and we laughed at each other the whole eight minutes, and uh, it's 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 fun stuff to do. It's what a joy to do is is cut out the dead time in the videos, yeah. 
because I, you know, most of these video, like today's video, I'll put one together for New Year's Day event. I probably have an hour, hour and twenty minutes of time on that camera. I don't know what it is because I have that's put in a box and come in yeah. here. <laughs> but I will squeeze that down to ten and a half, eleven minutes. So when you get it down to twenty minutes, which is the easy part because you can get rid of dead time yeah. and you know and stuff like that. But then you have to decide, okay, now I want to get it down to fourteen, fifteen, and then I'll run through it again. Okay, I can whack this out. I can cut that little bit of that dead time. To get it down to 11 minutes is tough in the last two minutes of video. You know what I'm talking oh, yeah, about. Oh, yeah, you're making hard decisions there. Yes. Because when yes. you get down to that mark, you, you're watching it. And I think because you're filming it, too, at least for me, I'm like, oh, I really enjoyed that. I'd really like that to be in there. And I almost have to take kind of an impartial step back. I do, too. And think about the viewer. On, I do, know, too. I really liked this, but the viewer is not going to enjoy it as much as I did. They weren't there. And I, I do too. I do. We're thinking alike. Yeah. I think of the ones that's going to watch this video and not my own personal taste. Yeah. You know, and if I can catch someone that, that miss and fellows are laughing at him, something's definitely going on there. You know, and, you know, or if he makes a funny reaction, if he, if he hits one, for example, someone today shot one of those playing cards, SpongeBob cards in half and the smile on that fell. I can't remember which one it was. So I look at the camera. Yeah. This was just thought, wow, this is cool. And uh, the youth were there shooting today, and they were smacking the zoo critter targets and smiling. And that's what it's about, yeah. is, is the kids having a good time and everybody showing up and having a good time. So um, that's what I'm doing lately is, is inviting others to come on and not just hogging the, the, the channel to myself. I could do that, but, you know, if you invite others to come, it's, it's just a lot more fun. Yeah. And, and uh, what we're going to do in the springtime is I'm going to, uh, matter of fact, one of the, the vendors over here, um, Darius Tezlovich has asked me to come up to Pennsylvania for a few days to up around his his um, Abe's General Store, I think's the name of his store. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, he asked me if I'd come up uh, back in 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 October for a day of shooting, but I couldn't do it because of medical reasons. But we're gonna go up next May, and we'll get the Mrs. Black Pedermanic shooter to run the cameras. And we're going to go up there, and, and he's he's going to invite 20 or 30 of his buddies over there. So we're going somewhere over there. I don't even know where he lives in West Virginia. <laughs> You're just going to show up to shoot. I'm going to show up to shoot with, with two or three camera, two cameras, uh, extra SD cards, and lots of battery life. Yeah. And we're going to set these things up, and we're going to laugh at each other. And he says he's got a lot of boyfriends up there that has girlfriends that won't go shoot with them. But they would shoot with someone like me because I'm different. Yeah. You know, and put put on videos, and the boyfriends want this to happen, so the girls go out and shoot with the boyfriends <laughs> after I leave. So, uh, so you're really uh, muzzle loading Cupid. That seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it. They, uh, so that's the kind of plans I have for the future for the channel is to uh, is expand it to others and put more fun stuff on there. And I'm really not into the how tos anymore. I got most everything on there that. That's my expertise with. And I mean, the, like, the guns are kind of 200 years old. You know, exactly. there's only so much you can go through on them. <laughs> yeah, there's only so much you can do with them. And, and uh, I don't want to get into the technical aspect. Just put five or six, seven minutes on, get to the point on, on cleaning guns or, yeah. or making patches and, you know, kind of have radical approaches on pouring around balls and making patches for that works for me. And I tell everybody, it works for me. Yeah. You know, you like it, fine. If you can make it work, great. If you don't, there's plenty of mail so you can try something else. That's something you know? we find talking to people is <laughs> muzzle letters are kind of personal and they can be yes. kind of temperamental too. And so oh, I, yes. I think it's good to to preface things with that. Like, hey, this works for me because odds are it's not gonna work for nearly anybody else. I tell quite a few of that, you know, this is what works for me. Yeah. And it, it does. So no. So you mentioned your wife is going to be your cameraman in Pennsylvania. Does she get involved, or do you, any of your other family members get involved a lot? You mentioned the van going down the hill. Yes. But do you do you bring your kids in any, or are they? I I used my oldest son in, in a in a trucking video a couple, a couple summers ago. We we put together a scene on the Licking River in in Kentucky, about three miles above Blue Lake State Park, where uh, me as the bad guy. I'm sorry, me as the good guy was paddling down through a ripple in a canoe where I need someone up on the bank to shoot me with a muzzleloader, with a flintlock rifle. Now, obviously, we dry fired him. We didn't put round balls in the guns. Yeah. But I asked him to just come down here. He put the second Frontier outfit I have on. Just lay against the hillside. And then when you see him come by, just come up, pull the trigger, 
have a you know we'll put a hundred grains of powder in it so we'll have a nice fire come out of it and so forth and then when I hear the noise I'm gonna pedal like I'm possessed to get out of the way he filmed that one scene for probably two minutes for that one video put together a couple years ago but uh, uh, my daughter wants nothing to do with it <laughs> she, had her, she did her PSA and yeah she's she done. She done with that she says he's gotten crazy at the video work you know so she didn't have anything to do with it, but uh, Mrs. Black Pyramiding Shooter will come and run cameras, but she will never, never get in the front of one of them. It's just not going to happen. She's, <laughs> that's she's okay, a ghost. I understand. <laughs> she's a ghost when it comes to that. And she'll be glad to run them, but that's where it ends. Yeah. <laughs> so. I guess just for my own personal curiosity, you know, what of the videos that we've put out recently, which one's your favorite? What do you oh, like? What do you not like? That's tough. Uh, are you talking about the ones that I, I put out, or what do you mean? Either one. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go with your favorite first. All right, then and I'll then, come to you then. Yeah. Um, I put together two of them in 2017, the June and the fall shoot. I think there's three of them in 2018, June and fall shoot and a woods okay. walk or shoot. And then last, this past summer, uh, a spring and a fall, and did uh, one with um, Tamby Dudley. Back in this, we did the woods walk in the summertime, and then another one. I can't remember what date it was. I think it was in the fall shoot where five of us were shooting the woods walk event, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a great time ribbing each other over that. Matter of fact, part of that is shooting those those uh, playing cards in half. Point That's so hard. I can't do that to save my life. But of the five of us, four of them shot them straight in a row. I could not believe those four did that. Came back smiling with that camera running. Look at here. Yeah. You know, of course, it's my turn. What do I do? I choked. I, I couldn't <laughs> hit it. And uh, uh, those were all good videos. They had a good time. With Probably one of my most favorite ones was the uh, New Year's Day shoot uh, put together last year. Yeah. It showed all these different fellas. I like to interview these guys. It brings uh, uh, different firearms with them. Uh, Bill Miller brought a, a blunderbuss with him when oh, talking cool. about that. And uh, Randy Johnson brought a, a big brown bass gun. And uh, Jeff Sluter brought a, a special built one he made. So I like to interview these guys for 30, 40 seconds and ask them, you know, what kind of locks are in them, triggers, barrels, whatever they want to say, and, and feature them on there to show the viewers that, you know, hey, you can get cool guns. Yeah. And you can come here and shoot cool guns. As much as you want. <laughs> as much as you want. And the New Year's Day shoot is actually... Uh, fact that you can go out and shoot someone's guns you may never own one yeah but you get a chance to play with a big smooth bore or, or a little squirrel gun or a you know a civil war type gear again that barry brought today yeah barry that was great that was a beast of a gun <laughs> it was i had a lot of fun i mean i was i was filming as much as i could today but just the generosity of everybody saying hey you've been working exactly. do you want to shoot some and i I want to go home and shoot some more. I don't want to work. I'm, I'm sick of working. <laughs> exactly, and I, I, I thought of you doing that too. And same way with here, I I uh, took a cap pistol with me today. You intention to shoot anymore? I shot it seven or eight times maybe, and and everybody else shot it twenty times. Yeah. So let, let others shoot the thing, and you know the cool thing is 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 you asked for it, you just load them right up, hand it to someone else, put a cap on, it, and shoot the targets. And yeah. that's that's the great thing about all those. Those guys up here today, they'll they'll let you shoot anything they got. Yeah, just ask. Yep, and it doesn't matter if it's a you know a, a traditions kit that they put together or mm -hmm. if it's something custom that they had ordered. You mm -hmm. know that's worth more than my car. <laughs> exactly. You know they'll they'll hand yep. it to you and say this is what you need to do. I mean ev I mean I've shot a lot, but everybody that let me shoot today was right there. You know saying mm -hmm. you know this has a heavy trigger pull, this is a light trigger pull. Be careful. You know this and that. And it was it was really great to see. Yeah, good successful shooting because uh, they 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 care about you not getting hurt for yeah. one thing, and you know shooting strange guns is you know intimidating because yeah. you may not know how to work them. And uh, Barry had one up for last year that has a, a double trigger on it that only works when you pull the trigger certain ways, and it doesn't work <laughs> like traditional double trigger guns. So I I I really was impressed with that that he uh, he showed us how that thing worked before we we actually played with them. So. Um, they they did a they did a, a pretty good job of murdering uh, the uh, duck target that oh I had up gosh. there. Oh my gosh! They really I mean, they some beat holes that, that thing sideways with uh, with all the round balls hitting it, and it actually had a big bulge in it, so it went up at lunchtime and turned around backwards, hung it back up and painted the backside of it. So they straightened it back out yeah. by the time we went home. <laughs> you made them do the work for you. <laughs> they did so. Uh, 
Good day. Good day all together. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you coming out and, and putting that on. And, you know, anytime you want to put something on, just let us know and we'll do whatever Absolutely. we can to get it going for you. Well, we're going to try to do this uh, New Year's Day shoot again next year. It's, it's always, you know, a poker shoot because you don't know if you're going to have seven inches of snow or 70 degrees. Yeah. We had 70 degrees on Christmas in Kentucky, you know, or it could have been seven inches yeah. here today. So... We uh, we hope for the best, and we could always shoot under the shelter of the offhand range over there. But it's just not quite as as homely as you would say because it doesn't have the hillside behind it. Yeah, the with all the targets and, and the creek. And correct, you know, we hang targets up there, and it's easy to hang water jugs and trees to shoot them spinning and and so forth. Well, there's no trees over at the main range, so it's tougher to do that. But. Ethan, regarding your video projects, uh, I've watched a, a few of them recently, uh, actually a couple of months ago, where you were promoting the uh, NMLRA at a, at a shooter's event, and I really enjoyed that, I think it was three or four minutes of what you put together, but you showed uh, action scenes, and that's, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a Clint Eastwood movie where he's, <laughs> you know, where he's running down the street uh, shooting at the bad guys or running around in, in police cars. You showed these girls shooting muzzleloaders in one clip, and then someone shoot trap in another one, and someone in primitive another one, and it was fast-paced action clips. And I thought that's cool because it kept me glued to the to the video to see what's he going to show next. And you did a fantastic job because you edited those in a fast-paced action way that that was intriguing to say, "Wow, this is cool." You know. Thank you. That it, means exactly. A lot from you. <laughs> well, it, it it does because you showed a lot, and what the projects I shoot is kind of a slower pace, obviously. But but I may focus on woods walks. That's the only time I'm here, or maybe shooting the running boar vent. But in the project you I watched, you showed trap, skeet, long range, the 500 yard shots. Uh, what else would you put in there? I can't remember now what they were. The pistol range. You you kind of showed eight, nine, ten seconds. Of a little bit of everything that the, that the association offers yeah. for a guy coming to shoot, and if someone isn't excited about coming watching that, then I don't know what it takes. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know, because there's not much I can do for you then. If that's you know, not your thing. exactly because I may not like long range shooting, but the next guy behind me watching the video will like it. Yeah. And he may not like frontier stuff that I do, but I would. So, you you kind of showed it all and and uh, I was I was really impressed with the one video clip that I, that I saw. Uh, Thank you. Back very in much. the summertime, I think it was. Yeah, I think that was. I think you're thinking of the family fun shoot video. That's what it was. Family yeah. fun shoot. Exactly. You did a fantastic job portraying what's offered here. Thank you. you it know. means a lot coming from the Scorsese, I'll say, well, of black powder. <laughs> I'm not an expert at it. As a matter of fact, uh, the the daughter really helped me most of it because I would ask her questions on the editing program, and it takes her longer to walk from front of the house to the bedroom where I got the computer, and I did her for to fix the problem. <laughs> yeah. I said, Sandy, you have to be kidding me. How would you do that? Slow down, show me how you do that. It's done, you know. So I, uh, I beat my head on the counter for months trying to figure this program. Now I've pretty much got the easy part down where yeah. I can put a video together and... and um, this one I'll, for New Year's Day, I'll probably work on them mm, four hours, and I'll have it done. Most folks don't realize that, but it yeah. it takes probably three to four hours to make it look like something. Are you, with watching. Are you when you're editing? Are you like? Are you playing music? Are you eating snacks? Are you just sitting in your underwear? Uh, <laughs> all the above. All the above. <laughs> uh, the the editing program is Final Cut Pro X or ten. Is what I use, and it, it takes the whole screen up as a, I want it that way. Yeah. And I have the timeline at the bottom without getting too technical, but I have a little screen in the top right corner where I can watch the action. And I could run the playhead back and forth real quick and edit out all of the dead time fairly quick. So the hour, the hour and something I have today to edit down, I could whack it down to 20 minutes within, uh, right. within 20 minutes. And then it gets a little bit harder. Yeah. Then you're what we were talking decisions. about earlier. You have to decide, okay, do I want to put this one in here, leave that alone. I'm going to cut this out because it's it's just not that interesting. And you know, I hate to cut folks out of videos, but sometimes I will yeah. because this one looks more appealing, and it's just the way it is. So uh, about three to four hours, I'll have to do it. But the program is, is very fast because it actually renders 
as you're editing, if for, for the folks what that means, the computer's updating what you're typing in the system as you're continuing to do it. Whereas the earlier programs, you had to do a few things, hit render, go get you a cup of coffee, come back 10 minutes, and finally what you did is updated. Yeah. So this one's a lot better program. And um, so that, that's why I use it. You use a Premiere, correct? Yeah, I'm using Premiere. Yeah, I'm so. not familiar with Premiere, but... I'm Sounds not like familiar with Final Cut. <laughs> probably, I, I, if you set the two computers beside each other, I bet there's not hardly any difference. It's Forge and Chevrolet. Yeah. They both get the job done. Yeah. It just depends on what you like better. Really quick, mm -hmm. the I think one of the neatest things, and people will see it in the videos, both from you and us, but I'd like to talk just a little bit about the Maniac Merry-Go-Round. <laughs> so... How did that come to be? Because I've never seen anything like it, and I want to go home and make one. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> That's good. I was thinking last year uh, when, I, when I was trying to think of something different for the event, and I thought, well, I'll put a round board up there. Originally, it was going to hang gallon milk jugs on it, and I realized you have to have string because of the way the handles are made. Yeah. On it. I thought, it's not going to work. And then uh, Mrs. Black Pyramid, she came home one day with a, uh, a Hawaiian punch jug. And I looked at that little blue handle on those, got this little handle, and I yeah. thought, oh, now we're in business. So I cut that round board out and just sink a little screw in the top of it and put four strings on it in the middle like a like an upside-down top. Mm -hmm. And I wind it up on the rope hanging in a tree branch so it will spin as it unwinds. And that's when we never once shoot it. And they, they absolutely loved that last year. And I said, we're going to do that again this year. And they... They had a great time shooting at it. There were 30-some fellows shooting at it. It oh sounded like gosh. a war zone out there with all those muzzle loaders. Yeah, I think you had like six jugs hanging off. And right. then after everybody shot, there were like two caps hanging. Exactly. <laughs> they, they they pretty much annihilated and, and loved it and loved it. So uh, Trent uh, Rim was the one to mention last year. He said, well, you need to call that the, the Maniac Merry-Go-Round. So... When I put the video together a couple of days later, I said, you know, I'm going to call, I'm going to use his name, and I even give him credit for it. Yeah. As Trent Wren says, it's, it's a merry-go-round, maniac merry-go-round, but I'm going to say it's a merry, maniac merry-go-round massacre, or <laughs> something like that. And here's what it looked like, and it showed up all the fellows shooting it. And, yeah. you know, it looked like you're, you're at a, a Revolutionary War battle where yeah. everyone lined up shooting each other. And it today was, was pretty cool, too, because there's more shooters today and a lot of lead slinging down yeah. at that. So I can't wait to go home and look at the video clip and see what it looks like. <laughs> well, good. Well, thank you so much. I don't know that I have any more questions for you. Well, you know, this was, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, and doing so much. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people that have said, you know, they were members for a while and they kind of got away from it, got away from muzzleloading, too, went off to other things, and then... They found your YouTube channel and they got their muzzleloaders back out and they, they joined back up and they started shooting again, started burning some powder and throwing some lead and you know just from everybody here you know thank you. Oh, you're for welcome. Everything you've done. It's uh it's uh, not just a hobby anymore. It's just an obsession now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are the maniac. <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why I use that title. It's, it's like the maniac shoot and it's. Um, it's a it's a good good hobby to get into. Once you get past the initial investment, the rest of it's fairly easy. If you pour your own lead, you're only out yeah. flint and powders, and that's it. And you know you can pour your own round balls, make your own patches, and all that. And it's very very inexpensive once you get past the first hit. Yeah. By buying your first muzzle loader and a few crudiments and so forth. So. And you're good to go. Good to go. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. And if you want to look for Mark's videos, we'll have them linked in the show notes, but it's at Black Powder Maniac Shooter. That's what you want to put in on YouTube's search window, and the channel will come up. Okay, good deal. And you got this crazy old fellow with a muzzleloader gun barrel almost sticking in your face <laughs> in, a, in a kind of a color, cream-colored outfit yeah. on the on the. You got on your, the own, um, it's a, your, your own frock. From frock. Yeah. Picked it up from, um, from a timber like uh, traders T over here at friendship uh, yeah. a couple three years ago I, uh, I saw that like that and it's uh, kind of a winterish type frock but yeah. I got that so we can use it in the winter time yeah and play out here and, and so forth we'd like to thank our friends at the primitive pursuit podcast for supporting the show if you haven't already be sure to follow the guys at primitive pursuit primitivepursuit.com they're working on publishing and getting the word out about traditional archery um, they have a great great podcast going and a beautiful social media page where they share not only 
traditional archery hunting, but just general traditional archery shooting sports and the craft behind traditional archery. Coming up this month, we have a few more guests to bring to you before we get out to the SHOT Show in Las Vegas here at the end of January. But if there's somebody in the muzzleloading, living history, traditional craft world that you'd like to hear from, please shoot us an email at podcast at nmlra.org or get in touch with us on social media and we'll do what we can to reach out to him. If you'd like to support what we're doing here with the Muzzle Blast podcast or the National Muzzle Loading Rifle Association in general, you can find out more about becoming a member at nmlra.org. And if you'd like to join or uh, order some merchandise like our books or t-shirts or anything, use the promo code PODCAST10 to get a discount off of your order. Thank you.